Good evening and welcome to the monthly installment of the Health Matters Radio Show brought to you by Riverside Shore Memorial Hospital. Good evening and welcome to Health Matters. This is Riverside Shore Memorial Hospital's monthly radio show. We feature local health care professionals with up-to-date health information. It's news you can use. This is Sally Schreiber, and tonight my guests are C. Lee Davis, who is the current chairman of the board of directors at Riverside Shore Memorial, and John Peterman, who is the administrator at the hospital. So welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for taking some time tonight to talk to us. We've got lots of great information to share. Thank you for having us. Of course. We wanted to kind of give everybody a little background tonight on how far local health care the healthcare that's provided by Riverside here on the shore has come, and then a little sneak peek at what's coming in the future. A couple of really interesting and, and exciting topics. So, Lee, you've been on the board, uh, the quite board a, quite of a few years. for a lot, uh, yeah, number of quite years now, years. and um, you're a great person to kind of give us the background on how we got to where we are today. Thank you. Yes, I've been on the. I was on the board back when we started talking about what to do with. Uh, with the building we had, which is, uh, has been there for quite a few years. And we looked at all the options about uh, replacement uh, as well as uh, rebuilding. And uh, we came out after evaluating all this over a, probably a year's time. We came up with uh, the idea that the best, best thing for us to do was to join a larger system. Uh, we couldn't afford to build it on our own. <clears throat> the shore couldn't afford it. The, our economic situation was, was tenuous at the time. The economy had just taken a nosedive, and, our, and quite frankly, our future was in question. We chose Riverside because of a, their similar focus on on keeping healthcare local. Right. Uh, that was that was something that was that we we really uh, wanted to try to do. That was important. They promised to replace our hospital, which was a big deal, mm-hmm. because sooner or later the hospital was going to need to be replaced, and they promised that they would do that. So. And then we had to analyze where the hospital should be. And, and for the long haul, uh, it, it really needed to be in an area that was the highest concentration of, of the citizens, of people living here. And so we looked at every place, and, and we decided that somewhere up in the Painter to Parksley Corridor was, was this more centrally located for the, for the uh, amount of, uh, of uh, citizens. Right. And uh, we look. We find this property in, an, in, in only in an Ancock area, which is where the new hospital is being built now, and uh, that seemed to be the, the best option for us. So we're, we're proud to be a part of a health system that is generous, has so generously invested $85 million for the shore. That's that's a lot of money. Uh, our partnership has given the shore improved technology, e- e- economics of scale. We have a brand new campus, and so we're paving the way to continued success and continued local access to health care. But we need the support of our community, our whole community, from the state line to the bridge tunnel, to make this go. Remember, we're not we're a not-for-profit uh, company, and uh, so the revenue, all revenue in excess of the expenses is reinvested in the area, uh, in equipment, uh, bricks and mortar, if you will, and training, and so forth. So part of our non-profit designation requires that we provide charity care if needed, and we certainly are providing that, actually more than a million dollars in charity care each month. So that's that's where we are and uh, how we got to where we are, and uh, uh, hopefully everyone understands that. Thank Great. you for having Thank me. Thank you. Thanks. So the focus on local was focus. what made Riverside such a great partner Absolutely. for the shore. And they are investing uh, in, in a new building and a whole new campus. It's not just a building. It's a campus. Absolutely. And John, you can kind of give us a look into the future about what we what we can expect. Yeah, Lee, I think Lee did a good job of kind of setting up where we where we've been. You know, the great tradition of care here on the Eastern Shore, and just kind of tease up. You know, how, how do we continue that? How do we keep it local? He said that was an important part of the board's decision is uh, to partner with a company that quite frankly, wants to keep it on the shore. And Riverside has a, a long, strong tradition in providing rural health care. So as we look to the future, as you said, we're not just building a new hospital, we're building a new campus. The campus includes the new hospital, obviously. The cancer center will be connected to the hospital and also a medical office building. So, and with plenty of room, if you've been by the site, if you've looked, there's room for future expansion. Right. Um, you know, as health care changes and and the way we do things change, we, we've got room to do that. So, 
Um, but, you know, buildings alone aren't enough. So even though we've got three great buildings coming up on campus, three buildings alone aren't enough. It, it, it takes a lot of folks to do what we proudly call the Riverside Care Difference. Um, that's how we take care of people. As we kind of summarize it in, you know, our, our, really what we want to do is take care of others as we would take care of those we love. And you don't do that with a building alone. So right. we've got a great partnership with our team members, uh, with our physicians. And that that partnership with people is critical to our success. And it's, it's not just really when you think about health care on the shore. It's not just what we're doing on the new campus or in the hospital. But it's our partners. So Eastern Shore Rural Health has been a big partner for us, uh, as well as the health department. We like to talk about whenever... Uh, we get together, that we are the health system for the shore. It's not just one of us, but all three of us, the health department, rural health, and Riverside together are making a health care system for the shore, on the shore. As I said, you know, rural health has been a great partner with us. They provide a lot of primary care, but we've forged some partnerships where we're sharing medical records so that uh, patients that are seen in one area or the other, there's a continuity of care and an element of patient safety that comes through that shared record. And our uh, doctors work very closely together, so they are in constant communication. So it, it isn't just one organization on the shore that's trying to do everything. That's, that's right. And as we talk about partners, we can't forget the emergency medical services uh, on the eastern shore. A lot of times they are the first, they are the first responders right. in many situations, and you know, making sure that they have the equipment and the training that they need to do a great job. Uh, we feel like there are ways we can support them, that we, and we do that as well. And uh, the board and the Shore Foundation have have authorized, and, and we've made donations to EMS to kind of strengthen that and make sure that as part of that system of health care on the Eastern Shore, that it's as strong as it can be. And if, and if I can jump in, it just happens to be National Emergency Medical Services Week. Mm-hmm. So a shout-out to all of our partners because they really are. They're the treatment they're before you get to the ER, right? They're dedicated. They certainly are. And remember, they're, <clears throat> they're both career and volunteer right. folks who provide the first responder. Anybody that remembers back in the 50s and 60s and is still living knows we've come a long, long way from what it was back in those days when you took an ambulance to pick up a patient. Most of the time, you didn't have anybody but maybe, maybe a member of the household help you load them up, and then you had to right. take them to the hospital by yourself. You didn't have emergency medical technicians in the back or whatever. Wow. It's a big difference. They're, so, they're a huge part of the team now. Yeah. So we, we've come a long way. And I think i, I got to give a shout-out also to the health department. As you know, those folks um, also provide some primary care and, and some <laughs> access to folks who need something you know, outside the hospital. But the hospital is there than whenever folks need it. And, you know, there, there's a place and a role for that. As we, as we talk about the new hospital, I can share some of the, the, what I think are interesting and neat features about it. The hospital now is well under construction. I mm-hmm. think you've probably noticed anybody that's driven by. is uh, we're, we're basically, uh, as the contractors say, we're the dried-in state, so the, so the building is enclosed. Right. Doors, we, windows. Roof. Everything's sealed. Everything is sealed and and construction has actually started on the inside. Right. So walls are going up. You can actually walk through now and actually get a sense for everything that we've seen on paper for years is actually coming to life. Right. The cancer center uh, connected to the hospital is well on its way. It's uh, not as far as long as the hospital, but we've kind of staged these. The hospital needed to start first because it was the bigger building, and then the cancer center, and then the medical office building. So the cancer center... If you've driven by is, you know, we've started closing it in. The concrete vault for radiation therapy is there. It's probably a good time to talk about that, too. You know, we're, we're very fortunate in our current site and new site that we have a comprehensive cancer center. So, and that means that we offer three, three components of cancer care. So our surgeons, our general surgeons, can provide surgical oncology. We have chemotherapy or medical oncology, Dr. Kerbin and her team. And then we have radiation oncology. Mm-hmm. Having radiation oncology here local is is just tremendous. Uh, without that asset, folks would be traveling many, many miles to get to a radiation therapy center. So having right. that here. And they go every day. Yes. That, and that's, the time. that's why I think right. it, that's, that's so critical. Yes, we offer surgical oncology and medical oncology, which are important. But radiation therapy is often several weeks daily. 
Right. So that, that travel distance. The medical office building is coming along in terms of the planning and permitting. Uh, we should start groundbreaking construction on that any day now. Contracts have been let. So um, it's all been designed so that all three of these things really are ready at the same time. Like I said, and that's, you know, <coughs> is winter uh, of this year. So winter 2016, 2017. Depending on the weather and construction, we're basically on target right now. That's great. And so this is a good place to throw in about the webcam. You know, the webcam has an image, takes an image every 15 minutes of the field where the buildings are going up. And while the outside activity on the hospital building has kind of slowed down because it's dried in now and most, most of the activity is going on inside, the outside activity on the cancer center is still very noticeable. So it's fun to kind of watch it. There's a little time-lapse feature so you can go hit the time lapse button and it shows you all this all the pictures in succession like a little movie. You can back it up so, to the to the empty right. field right. there was snow covered right. and uh, when the when the cam first went up. That's a fun thing to do if you have a couple minutes and you want to take a look to get there you go to www.riversideonline.com forward slash shore future and uh, and then you'll see a, a place where you can look for the webcam. Anyway, I'm so, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, let, let me tell you about some of the neat stuff that's inside the building. I, I think one, one of the things is, is the pneumatic tube system, and it's a lot like you see at the bank, but now we can have the pharmacy send medications directly to the operating room or to the cancer center through the pneumatic tube system. You know, blood samples for the lab and now yeah. can get to the lab a lot quicker. So, And that uh, keeps team members right the there with the patient, right? Yeah. So at the bedside or in the cancer center taking care of the patient rather than toting and fetching, I guess, back and forth. Right. Well, so, that's that's going to yeah. be huge. Speaking of at the bedside, you know, one of the things we use now, we call them <coughs> computers on wheels, and we move those around from room to room. Each patient room now will have a computer in the room. So when a team member, a nurse, a physician is in the room, they can actually look at the patient's medical record right there in front of them and have a conversation and with the patient and make their notes and really keep the record up to date, really ensuring what I said earlier, continuity of care, and without ever having to leave the bedside. Right. We're talking, you know, how is it, how is it different other than that? The hospital, like the new hospital, is actually about 20% bigger than the current hospital, and most of that you'll find is in the patient rooms. So the patient yes. rooms are much bigger uh, than they are in the current hospital. In fact, they have in the patients' rooms, um, we've got visitor chair. We've actually got a love seat that pulls out into a bed for folks that uh, want to or need to stay overnight. The bathrooms all have showers. Right. Um, and there's a, there's a private bath with each, with each room. With each room. And, of course, you know, you always got to talk about flat screen TVs, right? <laughs> so there's, there's large uh, flat screen TV in each room. It's important to people who are Absolutely. in bed, you know, and maybe not feeling well enough to read or exactly. do something else. If you're a news junkie, then, you know, like me, you got you got to know what's going on all the time. So. <laughs> and one of, one, of the, one of the nice things about this, it's like all new hospitals now, all the rooms are private rooms. Right. So these rooms are actually larger than the, than the semi-private rooms are in, in most places. Well, now so much of the technology can be wheeled into the bedside. The patient right. doesn't have to get up. They can right. have their tests right there while yeah. they're still in bed, yeah. and that's that's and that, just more comfortable for everybody. And that's a good point. One of the things that that's unique now about the hospital is 12 of these rooms now have dialysis connections in the room. So talking about bringing technology to the patient, we don't have to take the patient to the dialysis right. room. The dialysis will come to the patient. And, th- and that's a, one of the big reasons why the rooms are so much bigger right. but is to be able to have – both the <coughs> visitors stay overnight, but also to be able to bring the technology yeah. in. Lee, Lee said, you know, private rooms, and, and I think privacy is very important to folks. So not only do we have private rooms, but the emergency department now is all of the rooms there now are rooms, uh, right. no curtains uh, separating patients. Right. So I, I think that adds an element of privacy. Both uh, visual well. privacy and sound privacy. The other thing I think that enhances privacy is I call it on stage and off stage. All of the inpatient stuff, so the uh, patient rooms, the ICU, dialysis is all upstairs. And then outpatients are all downstairs. So radiology or imaging, cardiology, the emergency department are all on the first floor. So there's very little cross or mixing. If you're, if you're an inpatient, you don't feel well, you're not running into an outpatient downstairs right. um, because we, we've got this completely separated. 
Also, on the first floor, you were talking about outpatient is, um, and there was just some information both on WESR and, and some of the other local media about the um, heart suite, right. the heart yeah. services <clears throat> suite. Yes. Yes. So I, I hope people have seen, uh, I know it was in the paper, and I know it's been on our website, but I was talking about partners before, and I didn't say then, and i got to give a shout-out now to the auxiliary. Right. Uh, Absolutely. So we've got the um, the heart center, uh, and Dr. Killam's office are going to be on the first floor, and the auxiliary, as you know, pledged a very significant amount of money toward funding the heart center. So Indeed. that will be conveniently located on the first floor as well. Right. That it was quite a it was quite a gift and generous um, spirit, and they have done so much for even longer than the hospital has been around to support yes. healthcare on the shore. It's, that's really an, an impressive group of certainly of, have. of people. One of the things that I saw when we, we took a tour a couple of years ago of uh, Riverside Doctors Hospital in Williamsburg, which is not exactly the same as our building, but is in some ways is very similar. And one of the things that I saw that I thought was really cool is that the OR lights are these green mm-hmm. LED lights. Mm-hmm. And green and red are on opposite sides of the color wheel. And that means that when the green light comes on, seeing things that are pink like flesh tone or red like blood are much clearer. So the other the other cool thing about these lights is that they're LED lights so they don't heat they don't up. Heat up. Which that's, that's something that can be an issue both the staff, the surgeon and the patient end up getting warm if they've been in an OR with these really bright lights for a long time. For a couple hours, yeah. right? Yeah. So surgeons surgeons. surgeons will really appreciate that. <laughs> I, you know, one of the other things that we didn't talk about too is just the energy efficiency that that right. we built into the building in terms of insulation and uh, energy efficient glass and the whole energy plant is so much more efficient than than what we're using now. Well technology's come a long way in that arena too since As well. since and this it, building went up in nineteen seventy one. Um, that's all really great information. I would, the only other thing I'd say is, you know, look for the community newsletter. The, the most recent one should be coming out in the next week or so with, exactly. some, with some pictures of, of what we just talked about and, and probably a little more detail. Right. There will be a little more detail. We kind of <laughs> focus on the emergency room and what changes you'll see there. But there are also a few pictures of the interior construction, stuff that you can't see yet on the webcam. So take a look uh, in your mailboxes for that. You will also have some out around in places around the shore like restaurants and places where people can stop and pick something up. You can also check out information on riversideonline.com forward slash shore future. And there are three or four pages just about our new campus. It has all kinds of pictures, plans. There's a lot of great information. And then we are usually putting stuff out on Facebook every week or two about kind of what's going on with the new hospital. So it'll be artist rendering of what, what things are going to look like or um, or pictures from Riverside Doctors Hospital in Williamsburg, which, again, is serving a little bit as a model for what you'll see on the shore. So um, I thank you, gentlemen, for uh, for your time and the information. That thank was you for having us. A lot, of, a lot of good information fast. Absolutely. Anybody who has any questions about something you heard tonight, you can always call me at the hospital. This is Sally. Call 414-8050. I thank everybody for listening, and I hope you have a great week. Thanks again for listening to this month's installment of the Health Matters Radio Show, brought to you by Riverside Shore Memorial Hospital. Be sure to tune in again next month. This is Ken Blair, nurse practitioner with Riverside Shore Memorial Hospital Emergency Room. If you are ready to quit smoking, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW for free assistance and resources. You can do it. Quit Now can help.